Uh huh, honey. Oh, hello there, and welcome to a rather spooky video. This summer, I got to sit down and have drinks with Sir John A. Macdonald himself. How? You might ask. Didn't he die in 1891, you might wonder? What Trudeau hasn't been telling you is that Sir John A. Macdonald haunts the East Block. What is the East Block, you might ask? Allow me to happily explain. You see, between 1859 and 1866, Augustus Lave and Thomas Stent would be chosen as the architects for the buildings of Parliament Hill. Now, this includes the West Block, the Center Block, and the East Block, all designed in Neo-Gothic style. However, the East Block would be designed in High Victorian Neo-Gothic style since it would be home to the executive branch of government and the most important people of Canada at the time, such as our Governor General, our first being Viscount Monk, our Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald himself back in the 1800s, and the Cabinet and Privy Council, of course. Now, although these buildings were all built at the same time, spoiler alert, Centre Block would burn down in 1916. That's why its style is a little bit newer. Now, of the three buildings, the East Block is considered to be the most historic. In fact, they even keep the lighting dim to keep that 1800s feel. Things like electrical panels are hidden behind doors and elevators are tucked in the corners. Now, though the building serves several purposes, our senators have offices there, there are also four historic offices. The Governor Generals, the Prime Ministers, Sir George H. N. Calchase, and the Privy Council Chamber. The Privy Council table isn't real, it's here in Saskatchewan, but I won't get into that. At least we have something to be proud of in Regina, Saskatchewan. If you want to know anything else about the East Block, I have all the information, so please, please ask. But now now for the haunting. It all started with the elevator, you see. We had to walk by it to get to our staff lounge. Now one day I heard it open and close, but since our senators have offices in the East Block, I figured, ah, somebody's just probably heading upstairs. I heard the sound open close again. So I paused, looked into the corner where the elevator is situated, and noticed the doors opening without the button being pressed. A few seconds later, they closed, but then they opened again, and then they closed again, and they just kept doing this. Guess Sir Johnny MacDonald wanted my attention. That was the first time he came to me. Now, the second time I was walking down the hall, heading over to the bathroom that was designed especially for Margaret Thatcher, on my way back, I noticed through the window on the floor right below me, a light flickering on and off. Now I figured in my head where that room would be, and I realized it was the men's washroom right in the corner of the staircase. The light kept flickering on and off, and on and off. Sir John A. Macdonald was a man. That would be the washroom he'd use, of course. So I checked in with one of my good friends. I won't name him for privacy's sake. And he was able to testify. He said the light in that bathroom flickers all the time. I guess Sir John A. Macdonald just prefers his privacy. Now the last thing that happened that would prove Sir John A. Macdonald still frequents the East Block was definitely the scariest of all. It's important to note Sir John A. Macdonald's office was at the very corner of the East Block, so it would have been the coldest room. Nobody else used the office because nobody else was crazy enough to want to be cold. Sir John A. Macdonald chose the space though. He had it set up super nicely, pictures of his wife, pictures of his kids. Now it's also important to note that Sir John A. Macdonald died in office. Now just to clear that up, that means he died while still being Prime Minister, not that he physically died in his office, okay? But he loved his work, so he never retired, he never got a break. So maybe that's why he still works in the afterlife. Now in his office there is gas lighting, quite modern at the time. Now the gas lighting goes straight down to the lamp on his desk. I would always make this reference uh, when I would give tours of the East Block, but it would kind of fall flat because I'd say, oh, the lighting went down to the lamp on his desk. He didn't have to light it separately, but that lamp was never on. August 17th is a day I'll never forget because it's the day I came face to face with Sir John A. Macdonald and not just because I was looking at a $10 bill. I prefer seeing Borden in my wallet. Might I add, it was a stormy day in Ottawa. 
So this lamp had never worked. But then one day in our staff lounge, one of my friends came in and said, guys, the lamp in Sir John A. Macdonald's office suddenly works. Now a bunch of us laughed at her. <laughs> what a tale she told. She was simply trying to scare us, right? We went to do some investigating on our own. I had a tour to give and I was right behind my friend, we'll call her Bailey. I was super excited to get to Sir John A. Macdonald's office on this tour because I wanted to see this lamp lit up for myself. It had been two months in this building without it ever turning on. Now she stepped out of Sir John A. Macdonald's office and she looked more disappointed than I've ever seen her. She said, Catherine, the lamp doesn't work. My heart sank. I felt truly disappointed. But then I stepped into the office and I kid you not, the moment my foot hit the carpet in his office, that lamp came on. I guess Sir Johnny just likes some of us better than others. But who wouldn't like Bailey? She's really quite sweet. Now I looked at my visitors and I said, guys, this lamp has never worked all summer. So today we have the privilege of having Sir Johnny McDonald on our tour. Now maybe he can tell you about how he crashed the Charlottetown conference. Now the last story I will tell you I will not tell in my storyteller voice because it actually scared me to the core. But I would always joke about Sir John A. Macdonald's office being haunted. Just because he died while still being Prime Minister, I figured, oh, maybe his spirit stayed with the work. One day, I inserted this joke into my dialogue, and really, I would just add this to kind of take the attention of my visitors. Sometimes all the historical information could overwhelm them, so when I threw in something like the word haunted, their ears would usually perk up. Now, as soon as I joked about Sir John A. Macdonald haunting the space, the light in the room flickered. Now, I did not get one of my colleagues to sneak in the back and do some tricks. So something was definitely up. That is why I believe Sir John A. Macdonald haunts the East Block. If you have stories of your own, please leave them below. Now, it's said if you spin around three times in a mirror and pour a glass of whiskey, Sir John A. Macdonald will appear for you. The reason I know all this historical information is because I, myself, was a guide of the East Block this summer. It's a historic tour that teaches you about important historical figures that made Canada the country it is today. I hope you enjoyed my creepy little stories of the East Block. Do subscribe for more adventures.